We're here today with Natasha Cotchett, General Manager, Salsa's Fresh Mix and Grill. Welcome, Natasha. Thanks, Justine. What are your plans for Salsa's? We have got a huge, not just six months or 12 months, we've got quite a few plans for the next two years. We, at this stage, uh, some of our biggest plans are relating to our company stores, converting our company stores to franchise um, business, franchise operated businesses. When we first started this business about three years ago under the guidance of Retail Zoo, we, it, was, it was new for us and it was new for Retail Zoo. So we had company stores opening because that was the safest way of doing it. Now we're converting those. We've got 21 stores around the country and we, of those 21 stores, we've got 12 franchisees. So really another big part of that is also increasing our franchise network. Uh, we've got a really exciting plan with our fast casual model. So of our 21 stores, we have 19 food court stores, so very similar to this kind of model. But we've got two stores which are what we call like a fast casual dining. And they're anywhere from 100 square metres to 200 square metres. And so really our focus is going to be on growing that area of the business, which is really exciting for us. The rise of Fresh Mex, where does Salsa's fit in? Right now we are right in the middle of this hub of this um, Fresh Mex. When Boost or, and Retail Zoo first took over Salsa's, they were looking for something that was really going to align with the brand, with Boost. And it was all about offering sort of a healthy alternative into that food retail business, so hence Retail Zoo. Uh, what they found with Fresh Mex was it was something that they, as in Janine and Jeff, were really interested in. So what's happened now is that the market has really expanded. We've got players like Mad Max and Guzman and Gomez and, and us in here and with 21 store, stores already in there, we are well and truly entrenched in this business, in this marketplace and, and got such a strong foothold. So for us, we just see it exploding over the next couple of years and you know, obviously we would like to be the dominant leader in this market and be the most popular fresh mix brand. What are some of the biggest issues the industry is facing in your opinion? For the industry is definitely around franchising and it's, it's a few reasons. Is One is the amount of competition that's in the marketplace, not just in food retail but in retail in general. Uh, there's so much variety out there for someone to, to look through and trawl through websites and, and really determine what makes them want to pick not just like a retail business but why would they pick us, why would they want to come to Salsa's. Um, there's um, lending issues with banks and like how do they get their funding, it's no way near as simple as what it was a few years ago where you know you could have only a certain percentage that you needed to have as capital and you could borrow the rest, that's uh, far more difficult for them now. Um, also to do with margins, margins is a really strong part of our business so, and that's to do with labour, cost of goods. Um, and that is everything to do with your, the products that you put into the business. Your customers want to have value for money, so it's no point us putting in a product that is not good value for money for us, for our customers, but also is a, has got a really high margin. So for us, we use fresh produce non-stop. So we've got um, fresh tomatoes, lettuce, carrots, coriander, um, and then dairy and meat. So we're very impacted by um, the produce that we have. So for us, keeping margins down is going to be a continual issue. Labour with the changes in legislation has really impacted us as well. It has meant we've had to upgrade our, our systems to allow for the changes in it. The legislation's not a simple legislation by any means and we've had to get employment lawyers in, involved in that to help us understand that. So they're probably the big things that are facing the industry as a whole. Who is your typical customer? Typical customer for us is based on our demographics is probably it's quite an expansive group. It's from low twenties to early forties. At the moment, it's ever so slightly skewed by females. Um, that could also be because females sign up to loyalty card members uh, memberships a lot more. Uh, however, the range is. I guess for us the range is so large on our menu so we have burritos that are like low, small ones like chicken fajita which is just a light option or right through to a really heavy option so it caters for people that are wanting small meals, large meals, we've got kids meals for families to um, bring their kids as well as having share plates like nachos. So. It, it also lends itself to people that are looking for say a lower carbohydrate meal in which case they would opt for a bowl. So really the customer base for us is quite expansive. Uh, it also helps us for marketing. We don't have to target in on one specific area which is great for us. How has Salsa's changed since becoming part of Retail Zoo? 
oh, significantly changed. Just hands down, it was the, the main reason as to why we were able to grow as we have. Uh, Boost, uh, sorry, Retail Zoo and Boost, when they first took over us in 2007, there were four stores and it was only in Victoria. We're now in five states, 21 stores. Um, the infrastructure that Retail Zoo provides us is second to none. Um, not only if we had to outsource the works of what we need to do to build these stores and have leasing and purchasing, that would cost us a fortune, but it's the relationship that we have Retail Zoo. With Retail Zoo, it's very much as though it's just one big brand and it's not so much that you work on Solstice or you work on Boost, you work for Retail Zoo. So the growth is, has been without a doubt due to the support from Retail Zoo. Janine Ellis recently appeared on our TV screens in Undercover at Boss. How has that changed the business? About brand awareness for us. We had people ringing saying didn't even know that um, one Solstice existed or two that they were owned by the group that built uh, Boost Juice. So for us it was, Janine is so well known, she's one of the most well known female businesswomen in Australia. and. It, for us it just gave us credibility as well and people were then a lot more inclined to look at our franchise knowing that it was a stable business to go into if they were into a food industry because they had the backing of such a uh, such an amazing business that's got almost 200 stores around Australia so for us the long-term impact has been we've got we had a lot more franchise inquiries um, straight away within a couple of hours the inquiries were out of control Natasha Kotchett, thanks for your time today with QSR Media. Thanks, Justine.